I got to see firsthand the development of AI drone warfare. Wow. Uh, a lot of people don't know that, you know, these systems are uh, taking human life today by algorithm, meaning that you can launch a little drone system, the thing will fly out and it'll actually pinpoint targets on its own. So it'll like select targets and execute those targets as it determines. These AI systems are, are reaching IQs that are beyond humans. They look at um, this gift of AI as being the tool to achieve that. And ultimately, like these guys are very spiritual. I mean, they, you know, some of these tech CEOs, they, you can look it up. I mean, they, they talk about the spirituality of AI and, and they look at AI as being a god. All right, welcome to the New Age Human Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Astacio. And today's episode, we're talking with Christopher Wright, who is the founder of the AI Trust Council. He has a background in army attack aviation and was inspired to help to make sure AI is used for the betterment of humanity rather than its destruction. Stick around because we will talk about AI current and future threats, including some surprising insights from Christopher when he was in the military, and as well as, of course, solutions and what we can do to stay safe and protect our freedoms. Hoorah! Now, before we begin, if you want to get alerted to future episodes and are enjoying the content, I ask that you like and subscribe on YouTube or any other platform that you're watching and or listening to us. Just reach out to me if you have any questions or if you have any ideas on future episode concepts and people you want me to talk to. Now, with that said, let's get to the show. Christopher Wright, thank you for coming on the show. How's it going, man? Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's going great. <laughs> we were talking about just before we hit the record button, we were, uh, I was telling you that I'm like, this is going to be an interesting conversation because you have an interesting background and I want to know the story. And I was finding myself asking you prior to hitting the record button how that transition was. So let's start off there. How did you transition from flying longbow Apaches in the Middle East to running an AI company? Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of a funny story because, um, yeah, it, it really has to do with drone warfare. Yeah, I spent a long time in the Army. Yeah, I was a combat engineer right after high school and then went on to flight school. And But I had an, I was in the Army Reserves for a period of time and had an internship in, uh, in uh, Newport Beach, California, where I was working for a tech startup around the, uh, the dot-com bubble. And so I learned a lot about tech at that time. And then uh, it was actually an interesting position because I was able to review business plans for a a venture capital uh, company that was helping to fund these startups. And so I really got to see the foundation of the, uh, you know, the modern internet and all these companies that were coming in and, and uh, getting built and things like that. And then, but uh, anyway, so I ended up going off flight school and uh, did deployment uh, over to Afghanistan and, uh, and ultimately got out of the army and then started contracting over the Middle East. The money uh, when you're contracting is like three times what you make in the, in, <laughs> Like the regular <laughs> army penny. So it, may, it makes like, okay, this is common sense, you know, I can make like yeah. a boatload of cash, you know, just doing pretty much the same thing with less, uh, less rules. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so, um, yeah, so I was teaching over in, uh, Dubai and Abu or in Abu Dhabi for about, uh, almost 10 years, uh, teaching Lombo academics and, um, and in the simulator and teaching, uh, Arab students how to fly. So I did that in Saudi Arabia, also in Kuwait. Uh, for a little bit of time and then and then also uh the uae what was that experience like i'm curious it was really interesting um it, it's interesting coming from our military and you, you know you and you're used to kind of complaining and you know kind of bitching about the way things go and you're like oh my god you know so it's, it's not that these guys are uh they just have a the, it the mili their military mindset is quite a bit different than ours you know it's not as yeah it's just it's just, it's a different culture you know but but it was awesome at the same time. <laughs> I guess it was it like was, it's not as strict, I guess you can say. Is that what you're well, trying to say? Yeah, yeah. So basically, you, you know, like you're done at like one o'clock, you know, every day, and and then you know, and then uh, over in the Middle East, it's pretty cool. Like the, um, you know, they're they're always giving you public holidays, and so really, if you your contract over there, it's you get about sixty days off a year and stuff like wow. that. Wow, that's nice. So anyway. <laughs> But with that, yeah, so we're consulting with the you know the leadership there and uh, on you know weapons and things like that. And, uh, so I got to see firsthand the development of AI drone warfare. Wow. Uh, yeah. And so I would go to, you know, different, you know, trade shows and stuff like that. And back, even back in 2012, I, I was, um, saw a, uh, you know, drone swarm technology, you know, being implemented and, uh, and it's 
pretty next level, uh, as far as like capability. And so I, I could see very quickly, like, well, whoever's in charge of the system is going to have ultimate power. A lot of people don't know, but you know, these systems are, um, you know, taking human life today by algorithm, meaning that you can launch a little drone system, the thing will fly out and it'll actually pinpoint targets on its own. So it'll like select targets and execute those targets as it determines. So, that is, that is actually pretty alarming. Like <laughs> what's the qualification of a target? Can somebody look like somebody? So can someone wear a mask to make them look like someone else? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, it's, it's next level. You know what I was thinking? So in that, in that, in that essence, right? It's, is it targeting, is the system targeting based off of imagery? Yeah. So basically what it can do is that, you know, the AI is, is brilliant and it's, it's getting better and better. You know, that's one of the things today that, you know, these AI systems are, are reaching IQs that are beyond humans. Obviously, I mean, they, they've beaten humans and every game known to man, you know, go, you know, they beat humans, uh, you know, best chess champions. And so, if, you know, when you look at a battlefield, you know, it's like, well, these things can go out and then literally pinpoint. So they have like scout drones that go out and, you know, recon an area. And then if they see something, you know, they'll, they'll uh, it's a hive mind basically. And so they all work together. And so it's a, it's a scale thing. So like the more of these devices that are out there, they all talk to each other. And then if there's some sort of a, you know, thing, a, a scout drone figures out that is, um, you know, fits the parameters for what they're trying to look for, it basically will go out. So it can look at, uh, you can use facial recognition, you can use, you know, insignia, uh, uniforms, even vehicle types, things like that. Huh. And basically these things will, will come out in a swarm and then they use, you know, creativity. They use problem solving. They use, you know, manipulation uh, in order to, in order to achieve whatever goal they're trying to achieve. And so they're very, very clever. So you could have, you know, so, so for attack planning, they can come up instantaneously with a brilliant attack plan, uh, and then come in from all different angles and then, and then execute targets, uh, you know, and so it's. It's almost impossible for a civilian or not a civilian, but like a human to be able to zap one of these things. Um, because you know, they have some new drones that, you know, fly 120 miles an hour, you know, and they fly a low level. 120 miles per hour. Yeah. 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 You're not outrunning that. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you know, it, and, and I'm like, all right, we, you know, we, you know, we grew up watching movies about this stuff. And, uh, and so I started to see the, the technology and I'm like okay, the public doesn't know this. I mean, the public doesn't know that this capability exists. And I'm like, people have to know what the hell is going on because like it is the ultimate control tool, uh, you know, for governments or, you know, you know, you know, dictators, whatever, but it, it's just like, man, you, you literally can dominate an entire area with these, with these weapon systems. And so these weapon systems, the, the AI you have the drones that are run by AI, you have the swarm systems that is not exclusive to the U S correct. Yeah. It's actually the U S is hamstrung by ethics, you know, so we, we, uh, you know, there's a term called fire, forget and find. Uh, and so that, that is something that a lot of these, they call them munitions, basically they go out and then, uh, the launch, uh, so they fire them off he, uh, and the operator forgets about it. Well, the drone itself will then, you know, find the target, locate the target. And so in the United States, you know, we have uh, a system where it's like, it's called human in the loop. And so basically what that means is that you want to keep a human in the decision chain to make, you know, lethal decisions. Whereas in, you know, third world countries and, you know, whatever, I mean, small dictators, they don't care. And it's really just about the money and how big they can build this uh, drone army, you know. Wow. You know, so that's alarming. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like pretty wild. So you're saying that it's the, the likelihood of an, a, uh, of a drone that's being powered and run by artificial intelligence, the likelihood of that pretty much taking a life outside of the U S is much higher than within the U S. So when abroad, be mindful of that. Is that pretty much what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I think that, you know, earth, you know, talk about like the, you know, the big eclipse coming up, um, this week and, you know, it's, it's like, we're on the, the verge of a, a complete change of humanity, you know, and how things work, but you know, it's based on this technology and, and that's what people really need to know about is that this technology is, uh, 
you know, fundamentally transforming humanity, you know, almost on like a biblical level. You know, l- literally you talk to some of these, you know, senior uh, engineers and, you know, tech CEOs and, uh, and there's really a split in Silicon Valley where these guys that are uh, pushing these systems are not pro-human. Uh, literally, they, they look at humanity as a placeholder for technology, meaning that, you know, as technology progresses, you know, hum- humans in their current form are just a placeholder. So they, they call it speciation. And so they look at this, uh, the situation where they want to speciate humans into a new species, uh, like, you know, like a caterpillar, uh, to a butterfly kind of thing, or you just completely transform. And, uh, and so they look at, um, this gift of AI as being the tool to achieve that. And ultimately like these guys are very spiritual. I mean, they, you know, some of these tech CEOs, they, you can look it up. I mean, they, they talk about the spirituality of AI and, and they look at AI as being a God. And, uh, and so what they want is they want an AI God and they also want an AI government. And, uh, and they believe that, you know, ASI, which is artificial super intelligence uh, is ultimately going to be the thing that leads humanity, you know, from here on out. And so no longer will you have like governments, you'll have a single government, one world government that is run by an AI system that, uh, that has surveillance over, you know, all of humanity. And yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I've heard that, right. You have transhumanism in that whole category where you have the bionic implants and you have Elon Musk tr- putting the neuro, I forgot what it's called, but he's pretty much wanting to find a way to have you mentally connected to, to the, uh, to the computer. Yeah. You went, you went there. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's something that people should really know about because. Oh yeah. Yeah, because it's it's one of these things that you know the public, you know, it's like, hey, it's a, you know, it's a new iPhone, it's this cool new gadget that I get to play with, and you know, save time on homework, or you know, make, make you know, make writing easier or whatever. And it's like, no, no, it is so far beyond that. It, it's it's actually uh, it's spiritual. I mean, it, it well, makes you're you're saying that these people that are leading the charge in this technology, would you uh, what percentage? are you seeing of the people that are running the show for the development of AI and the integration of AI? Do you see it just, it sounds, you tell me what's the percentage of people saying this is going, we're, we're gunning for ASI and we're not worried about the consequences. Like. It, yeah. In, in the public, if you were just to take a cross section of the public, I'd say it's about 20, 30%. The pro pro human folks outnumber by far, Good. or who are who are not, you know. But the problem is these guys that are not pro human are, are typically uh, they're very smart, uh, very uh, engineer minded, and a lot of times in tech, those guys just like launch to the top of organizations. You can look at Sam Altman, you know. You can look at uh, you know Peter Peter Diamandis, you know. He talks about this stuff. You know, a lot of these like uh, leaders in tech. I mean, this is this is the mentality, and so yeah. Well, doesn't Elon have a lawsuit against um, the guy who Sam Altman? Sam Altman, yeah. yeah. Doesn't he have a, a a a lawsuit because he's saying that the guy is holding out and hiding AGI, uh, yeah. artificial generative generative or general, general intelligence, intelligence yeah. right? That's like the step below a- ASI, right? Yeah, and the funny thing about AGI is that they're like, yeah, AGI is like fifteen minutes. So pretty much like if you can get AGI, I mean, this like the, so, you know, there's some fundamental things that were not supposed to ever happen with AI that in this, you know, in this time, you know, like this, this horse, AI horse race. So, you know, it's never supposed to, um, you know, write its own code. You know, AI was never supposed to develop its own AI agents and, and models, but you actually have, you know, and then it was never supposed to be, op- you know, allowed to access the open internet and, uh, and play around there. So you have an, you know, AI. Think of it as like Superman, you know, coming up and just inventing new AIs and then, and then, inter, and, you know, and writing code very accurately and then, and then, you know, accessing the internet to manipulate stuff. Yeah. And so, so you're like, what? Like that, you know, that was, that was never allowed, that, that was never supposed to be allowed to happen. And yet it is. And so you end up with a system where these, these AI, you know, so AGI, artificial general intelligence you know, quickly morphs into ASI, which is artificial super intelligence, which means that it's, you know, beyond humans in every single, uh, capacity. So, you know, like logic, reason, uh, you know, problem solving, decision-making, 
you know, and then, and of course it's like, you know, the depth of knowledge in any subject is endless, you know, because it's, it's AI, right? Do so you, do you think we are at AGI already? Oh, yeah, why well, that's what, that's what I think about the whole lawsuit with, um, Elon Musk. I mean, you know, they, they, in that lawsuit, you know, there was a individual who worked for Google DeepMind, where some of the investors in Google DeepMind recommended on behalf of humanity, um, we should, we should kill this guy because, because we should, we should shoot him on the spot because of what he's pushing for, for humanity with, with that technology. Google Just Deep. be clear, who are they trying to assassinate? Yeah. Yeah. His Sam name. Sam Altman. No, no, no. I can come up with his name here in a second, but, uh. Yeah, no, but it, but it's this, uh, uh, Dennis, uh, it's, his name is Demis Hassabis. Uh, okay. Demis Hassabis is like, so in the, you know, written in that lawsuit, Demis Hassabis, uh, it was written that the, in the testimony in the lawsuit that, that one of the investors was, was written in the lawsuit saying the best thing that could happen for humanity is to take this guy out. So for the audience, who is this Demis, uh, D-E-M-I-S? Yeah, Demis uh, Hasabis and, uh, and he is the, I believe he's the, the CEO of uh, Google DeepMind. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, but it's like, but it, it, it's just a reflection of that industry just being out of control. And so you got these guys that are not pro-human, literally they, they, they are like, no, it's fine if humanity gets destroyed. You know, Sam Altman talked about, you know, 20, 20 2015, he, he literally has a quote where he's, he's on stage saying, yes, uh, AI will destroy, destroy humanity. But in the meantime, there are going to be some amazing companies that are built. In the meantime, meaning he doesn't care. Wow. Well, wow. All right. Well, there's obviously a threat. <laughs> and I feel like most people are digesting the threat in what we see in social media. Outside of the obvious Terminator situation, you have deep fakes, you have misinformation where you have the people... AI calling people and pretending they're family members and then asking for money. And now you have people that want to have code words, which I suggest you have a code word and then the privacy breaches. But I feel like what's closer to home that most people see because most people are, are pretty much scrolling and using social media for entertainment or for business purposes or political means communication. Those deep fakes are freaky and misinformation as well, especially leading up. I mean, right now it's beginning of April, 2024 at the time of this recording. And this is election year, right? And AI is just steamrolling forward. What are your thoughts son? so yeah, let, let's, I think there's enough buzz around the challenges and the threats to AI, but how about let's go towards the solutions. What are your thoughts on the solutions? Because that's, that's your bread and butter right here. So let's, uh, let's get into how do you feel we should solve for these threats? Yeah. And, and, you know, and it's, it's really like, um, uh, selfish of me because I, I created this company called AI trust council. And the reason why I created it, cause I saw this coming and I'm like, we, we need something that counteracts this agenda and then puts humans in charge of AI. And it's not one person. It's not like a small group of people. It's the people, you know, the people can be in charge of AI. And so the way, you know, that's done is through blockchain, you know, blockchain is this gift, you know, and this, you know, the, the ability to, you know, figure out what's, what's real and fake and, you know, work what the origin is of information and all that kind of stuff. Like the gift of blockchain has allowed us to do that. And it's allowed us to, you know, you know validate information. And so it's this amazing tool. And so the whole concept behind the AI Trust Council is that you use blockchain polling uh, and then also uh, KYC for the individuals that are on the site that, that validates that they, one, are human and that they do exist in the real world. And, that, and, and if they produce uh, content online, that, that if they start posting fake stuff, their audience members can say, hey, I think this is fake, you know, and, and they could challenge the, the people uh, who are posting it on it. Um, and so if someone kind of gets a reputation for posting fake stuff, then, then it's like, okay, it's fine. They can post whatever they want, but it's, you're just not going to trust the data that much. You're not going to trust it as being real. And, um, and so that's one of the fundamental issues going, uh, into the future is really figuring out what is real and what is fake. And, uh, so it's, you know, it's a critical moment 
And so the idea is, you know, with the AI Trust Council, what we're doing is we're recruiting firefighters, EMTs, uh, commercial pilots, humanitarians, uh, military veterans, basically people trust that have uh, literally put their life on the line or de dedicated their lives to helping other people. And so, you know, the catch all is humanitarian. You've got five people that can attest to you being a humanitarian, then you're humanitarian, meaning that you've helped other humans, um, you know, out in some way. And so there's a characteristic with, with people where that are not pro-human, where they typically don't sign up for jobs like that. They, they don't, they don't do that kind of work where they're, they're uh, dedicated to really helping other humans. And so the idea is like, well, we want pro-human people who care about humanity. You know, not, they're not there for the money. They're not there for the power, but they're there just because they care. They, they, they want good things. They want to see good things happen to people. They don't, they don't want to see AI just, you know, run over humanity. And, uh, and so the idea is that that organization can ultimately, um, you know, form an opinion on what is good AI and what is bad AI. I and mean, currently there's really no leadership uh, in the AI space. I mean, you have some, you know, the Rockefeller Foundation, for example, you know, they're funding a big uh, initiative right now. Uh, I just talked to somebody down at South by Southwest uh, recently where she's, this lady's getting paid to go to uh, Lake Como in Italy to study AI governance. And so the globalists, elite, you know, bankers, the money people, uh, basically they have an agenda and their agenda is to steer humanity in a direction and ultimately be the leaders of an AI government. You know, so it's, it's the one world order, you know, the new world order, the one mm -hmm. world government, you know, and so that, uh, so these bankers are ultimately the guys that are uh, gonna, they're, I mean, they're running the show currently and they're going to continue running it with this AI. But the thing is, it's very draconian, you know, this, this the, you know, these, you know, if you have something that's artificial super intelligence and you have six foot tall robots that, you know, can make a gourmet dinner for you in your kitchen and then also, you know, become, you know, uh, slaughter bots and, you know, like Terminator 2 Judgment Day, you know, that that's 2025. Literally we're, we're, you know, months away from, you know, these, these things coming on board. Uh, Tesla just came out with this, uh, humanoid robot hasn't been released yet, but they're planning on releasing it for 20 grand. And this thing is like capable as, as capable as a human, but you know, potentially can be linked to AGI or ASI. And so the problem is it's like, you have this, uh, you know, warping of the mind because these, these uh, AI agents are able to, you know, manipulate you. And so they, and, and it's, and it's an all knowing thing, you know, so like your phone is, you know, listening to, you know, everything you say, your tone of voice, you know, the way your high, eyes move when you look at a, a screen, you know, the micro expressions around your eye, you know, all the background information from your family and friends, you know, how you sleep, how you snore, literally it's every aspect of you as a person is getting sucked up and then added to this database, the database that they're storing underground. They're storing it out in the ocean, uh, away from humanity, offshore. Uh, they have these little offshore islands where they're, they have these data centers that are immune from U.S. law because it's uh, often Ooh, international waters. And so it's like, okay, well, what are they doing with all this data that they're collecting? And so that's, and so you have a banking elite that are, that are sucking this data up. It's the same banking elite that are steering humanity currently. You know, so if you look at the dystopia in society, you know, so you're talking about, you know, homelessness, the crime being out of control, you know, health being just wrecked, you know, I mean, I don't know anybody who's like truly healthy at this point. And it's like, what the hell is going on? You know, and so it's this, they call it the boy like frog, you know, it's a slow drip, drip, drip where they, you know, slowly, you know, morph us into a new future and, uh, and they do it at a, at a slow speed so that we don't really fight back. And so the, the technique to, you know, pushing back on these guys is, is awareness, you know, they operate in secrecy, you know, so if you can look at them and say, Hey, look, I see you, you know, it's in, and this, you know, I, I do a lot of talks and within this a moment in human history where it's like the bankers have just gotten out of control, you know, I mean, they've literally run amok. And so it's one of these situations where it's like the wizard of Oz, you know, you pull the curtain open, you see the little guy back there, you know, pulling the levers of society. And it's just some little dude that's like, be scared, you know, fear, panic, you know, all this stuff. And it's like, who the hell are you? What the hell are you doing? You know, like, where's the transparency? And so that's when we get into blockchain as being this gift because it's like, man, like we, you know, with blockchain, we can, we can identify like the origin of data. You know, if, you know, so for the AI trust council, 
once you're on it, you can appoint five other individuals that are your friends or family, just people that you trust. And you don't have to trust their opinion, but you just have to trust that like, that they're, you know, that they're like, you know, somebody you give the keys to your house to, you know, something like that. You know, you'd let them watch your dog or something, you know, somebody that you trust on that level. And the concept is that you have a network of people who are trusted and who are all connected somehow, then you can identify the, the source of doubt, the source of information. And, uh, it's, it's a, it's a unique way to solve the alignment issue with AI. And so, yeah, there's a lot of details to it, but it's, uh, you know, so we're building site currently right now, but I think people really enjoy it because it's, it's like, as we move into this future of, you know, like what is real, what is fake and, and really having no idea because of all the deep fakes and everything else, it's, it's a, it's an amazing tool because it, it gives some stability. And it brings the internet back to the way it used to be, where it's like, okay, everybody's human. Yeah, I'm trying to understand how it would work. As, as, are you saying that the council would be like a policing agent, or would you say it's more like a social media platform that you know that you're safe on the platform? How, how would it work for an average person that wants to use AI? Yeah. So the idea is it's, you know, if you think of like LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, you know, all in one site with the emphasis being on LinkedIn where, you know, it's not just professional, but it, but it's, it, but it's your reputation, you know? So like, you know, you're on LinkedIn, you know, you, you have your, you know, your networks that you've worked with and people that endorse you for different attributes, that kind of thing. What we're dealing with is a, is a social credit score that's coming. And, uh, and so the social credit score is gonna, going to be tied to the currency through a central bank digital currency. And so, so depending on how well you behave or how well you toe the line of whatever the globalists want, will determine your social credit score. And so if you have AI that can then steer, steer the behavior of the individual, then it's like, it's the ultimate, you know, talk about that Wizard of Oz where it's like the levers of power, you know, that can completely steer humanity, you know, yeah. with, and so the idea instead is like, well, how about a, uh, a system that's based on freedom, a system that, you know, uh, demands constitutional civil liberties and, and, you know, human right or, you know, your civil rights protection, you know, with AI, you know, so that's one of the concepts is, is to, uh, install a constitutional code set, uh, and that, you know, into AI systems to where they have to abide by, you know, the constitution. And so they can't infringe on your civil liberties, meaning that you do have privacy. You, you do have, you know, due process. You do have, you know, the right, the freedom of assembly, the freedom of religion, the freedom of speech, you know, all those kind of uh, aspects. And so if you have those things as a, as a baseline written to the code of AI. So when you have these, you know, ASI robots that are, you know, absolutely brilliant, it will limit their behavior. So they cannot, you know, infringe on your personal rights, you know, and, and so with the AI Trust Council, the idea is that it, it's, it's a countermeasure to the World Economic Forum's agenda. And so the World Economic Forum is pushing this agenda that is uh, a top-down social credit score, very similar to China. And uh, hence we're like, no, like, you know, we're in the United States, screw you. We're, we're not, we're not, we're not taking, yeah. <laughs> screw you guys. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so, so, so the, the trust council, like, uh, it, it's from the individual. So, so you're in full control, just like you are on LinkedIn just like you're on Facebook, but you personally are in control. And the idea is we have some moderation and uh, monetization uh, tools that, you know, get people paid for being honest, you know? So if you're, if you're honest and trustworthy, you know, the, the only rule on the site is the golden rule, treat other people the way you want to be treated. And, and, and we empower the individuals to self-govern, self, you know, self-police their, their own uh, chat rooms, their own, you know, content, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and the idea is to, to gift this to the people. So the people have a tool to push back and, uh, mm. and, and maintain some, some sense of freedom, uh, you know, while, while still understanding what's real and fake, getting paid for it, and then ultimately helping to steer humanity, uh, in AI in a, in a pro-human direction. And, and, and do, you, do you see it as an alternative digital ID, whereas people are going to was, you know, and I agree what's trying to be pushed and in, in the plans is a digital ID with the intent to, uh, on the back end, right. You're, it's going to limit your ability to do things and make decisions, right. Your, your sovereign 
uh, your, your, your sovereignty, your, I, I'm having a hard time with that word, but yes, your, your civil liberties will be taken away Mm -hmm. and you'll be highly influenced. But let's say the main system, right. Or the government system, whatever, however it, it is, do you feel like one that is going to be a, a major shift or is going to be a slow transition? And then two, while that's in place, do you see this as an alternative similar to bartering where bartering is interpersonal and it's a lot easier to work with somebody versus this is set in stone, whatever decision you make? Because if someone gets in trouble and they can't take the bus, is you know, do you see this as an alternative ID that can be used in a uh, community or do you see this more as a platform for communication. Yeah, more platforms for communication and and a platform for uh, validation. So like if you're a business owner and you say, hey, I've got, you know, uh, a mechanic shop or plumbing business or something like that, you know, you, you want to have a reputation for being fair, for being honest, for being, you know, doing, you know, serving the customer correctly, you know, whatever. But it, but it's, but it's, you know, like LinkedIn where, you know, the audience gets a score. At the same time, you have to protect privacy. You know, you have to be able to be anonymous. You have to be able to uh, disappear if you want to disappear and, and, you, and you don't want to be tracked. You know, the whole concept is that, you, you know, our metadata is being you know, used against us. You know, it's like, you know, every day you pick up your phone, you make a noise, you do anything, it creates metadata. And, and so that metadata is all getting sent to these data centers. And so what's happening is that you have these, you know, tech elite that are not necessarily pro-human and, and they're so focused on technology to the point where they're, they're happy about human extinction because they think it will, uh, you know, evolve into a, a new, uh, AI, uh, robot, basically future where we're digitized and it's called transhumanism. I mean, that's the whole concept behind transhumanism. And so, you know, as, as we go into this future, it's, it's, it's pretty disturbing. So, you know, so it's up to us to, to say, Hey, no, we have, we have a system that's built by the people. It's for the people and, and it protects privacy. It protects constitutional civil liberties. And, uh, and so, and so it's not a tool that can be used against us. It's a tool that we can use. I mean, it's just the internet, you know, it's just like, why do we have to end the world here? You know, we don't have to end the world. We don't have to have some dystopia, you know, life as we know, it doesn't have to get crazy. You know, it can be, it can be happy. It can be good and it can be positive and pro-human, you know, and, and not only that, but like our tools that we have today are so empowering that we can literally like build any future that we want with AI. And so it's like, well, you know, let's have good people, you know, pro human people, you know, help build that, you know, and determine, you know, and, and so the way the trust council works is, you know, people can poll, people can vote, you know, and it's, you know, simple as a thumbs up, thumbs down, or, you know, like some sort of poll, but every post that is made on the AI trust council has a, a polling capability. And so the more people that interact with your poll, uh, the more metadata you, you create. And so you are the owner of that metadata. So it's a web three platform where you're the owner. And so, so the idea is that you should own your metadata, you know, not Mark Zuckerberg, not Sam Altman, you know, not Bill Gates, but you. And so if you own it personally, then that becomes like your bank and it's like, okay, mm-hmm. well now I've got all this metadata that I can then use, you know? And so the, depending on your metadata that you can then sell it to advertisers and then also you know, tech companies and other organizations that want to have a data set of a good pro-human metadata. You know, you know, most of the AI that's generated today is based off of the data set from the open internet, you know? So that means that we're training AI models to be as crazy as the open internet. It's what it's like, you know, what good is that? And, uh, and where are the filters? Where are the ethics? You know, all this kind of stuff. And so, uh, the idea is, you know, modeling good behavior, leaving it up to the people to figure out what that good behavior is. And then, and it creates a marketplace for high quality data that you can then sell as an individual and then make a passive income if you want. You know, if you don't, if you want to just store all your metadata, you want to delete your metadata. Um, that's what we're pushing for. We're pushing for, you know, that this is your information. You should own it. You should keep it. You, you should be the custodian of it and um, be able to control it. Mm. Uh, and so the idea behind that is not very popular in Silicon Valley because it doesn't fit the model of this globalist agenda. You know, the globalists want total control over humanity. And so, you know, all the way from your gut microbiome to, you know, your cell phone, you know, it's like everything, you know, all the way 
you know, and, it, and it's just, um, and you can see that manipulation and, it, and it's like, you know, like I said, it's the Wizard of Oz, curtains open. We can see these guys finally, you know, we can see them. It's obvious, you know, and it's up to us at this point to say, no, 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 this is what we want. Uh, we don't want to get speciated. We don't want to, you know, lose our humanity here. We, we want, we want to have a pro-human future, you know, and, um, and so that's what we're all about. We're all about that and, and supporting the individual. So, mm. yeah, building that pro human, pro -human metadata, metadata, building the, well, empowering a lot of people to be in that space of uh, Web3, which is the, the well, yeah, if, you, if you're into crypto, you know what Web3 is, but it's the crypto based internet, right? Yeah. Where you need a wallet to plug in, so to speak. And uh, I do see that I'm having more and more conversations around that as far as solutions being on web three, but the challenge is bridging that gap from the novice user to the person that's going to use it daily. And I, I still feel like it's in the beginning stages, but there are a growing amount of people, companies that are building on, on that. My question to you actually is since it is web three based and it's on a blockchain, which blockchain did you go with? Yeah, so right now we're we're operating. It's Jack Dorsey's platform. Noster is what uh, AITC is built off of, and so we're we're doing development right now. And so we we may switch, but uh, but right now it's on Noster, and yeah, so it's cool. There's really good uh, you know protections for privacy and and things like that, and the ability to communicate um, anonymously and whatnot. So it's brilliant. I'm trying to remember. There's a uh, a company that's working on building a social media platform. They have a blockchain and it is built for social media, like the centralized uh, social media. I think it's called DSO. Okay. And I think that would be something very, very similar and aligned with what you're working on. I would totally, if you're not aware of it, I would totally, totally check that out. They're okay. in a bit, they're in a bit ugh, beginning stages as well. But they're more on the building the blockchain and the network to support something like what you're building. Interesting okay. enough. <laughs> yeah. And, and so it's kind of interesting because I feel like, you know, there's a wavelength going on right now where a lot of people are, are uh, feeling the same thing. You know, they're like, look, like, you know, we see where this is going and, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not going down with the ship here. You know, it's like, let, let, let's create some cool products. Let, let's keep the internet fun, cool, interesting, you know, but not dystopian to the point where, you know, we lose our humanity, we, we lose family, you know, we lose, you know, what it is to be a human, you know, it's like, what good is that? Yeah. And to your point, I do agree. There's a wave of people that are working on, and, and that's why I started this pod, bought this podcast, because there is a wave of people that are finding better ways to, to do things. And you're on the side of the safety of, integrating AI into our lives because the people that are in charge, like you said, they're not pro most, mostly not pro human, which is very scary. And it also reminds me of there's, there's also an, an increasing amount of shows and movies that are talking about the potential future. Like it's a, like it's a, it's an advertisement. Are you familiar with the Netflix series black mirror? Oh yeah. There was an episode where there was that social credit score and it came out just before China really built out their system. And I see yours being something that would compete against, uh, uh, if anything, on like you said, like on the community, on, on the communication side of things. So, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of opportunity out there. There's a lot of things that need to be fixed or done better. So I, I do appreciate you stepping in and, and finding solutions with your company, with your background. Do you, do you see integrating what you saw with the drone warfare in the future? I'm actually curious. Yeah, like, not, I, I think it's absolutely critical that, you know, militaries and well, it's really, we, we need leadership, you know, and right, right now there's this complete vacuum of leadership worldwide. And, uh, and my, my take on that is actually in, in order to, um, you know, the, the whole agenda is to create this surveillance system. That's basically like a, you know, social credit score system, but basically it's going to tie all cameras together 
and all devices together through the internet of things that then becomes like the ability, you know, it's the ultimate, you know, thing of the KGB on absolute steroids to the moon, you know, it's like, like, it, you know, so it's, it's really like minority report, you know, you, you have that where you have mind to device interface now, you, you have the patents coming out that have been filed and, and whatnot. And, and literally these, um, you know, the ability to suck in all data, understand exactly what a person's thinking, doing, you know, it's an unbelievable amount of power, uh, if you can do that through an entire society. And, uh, and so you can look at China, you know, so China, you know, and, and, and humans are, they're programmable, you know, so you, you, you can program humans, you know, we're, we're, you know, our IQs aren't that high, you know, and you have these AI systems that are, you know, going into the billions, you know, that that's right around the corner, you know, 1 billion IQ AI is right around the corner. And it's, well, so you have that and it's like, well, how do you compete with it? How, how do, how do you look at your phone? And, you know, you'll talk to this AI, you know, so when the AGI is out, it, it lo will look like a, a God, you know, it will look like, and that's what these guys want. And, and that's what Sam Altman is uh, hinting at that, that, you know, they come across is that it's a breathtaking uh, moment where you look at your phone and it just knows everything about you better than a human would. And it's like, it's like you have a brilliant human being in your pocket. The problem is that you humans are, will start to relate to that device and then form a relationship with it. And, you know, just like humans can get manipulated in an abusive relationship with someone, it's the exact same thing with AI. You know, the AI can then manipulate, you know, human behavior. And, and so if you think about a social credit score, you know, like Black Mirror, it's like, you know, you could see how dystopian that can get very, very quickly. And the whole idea is that we do not want a system like that to be used against people so they can't trade, you know, buy things, you know, if, if their social credit score is low. So you want, you know, this new system to be based in gold and silver back currency. Um, so that it, that's something in the physical world that is real, you know, so you can use blockchain for that, but ultimately you want gold and silver to be the backbone of whatever currency is in the future so that people can always, you know, go to California and dig in a river and you'll, you can still get some money. You know, you don't want, you don't want individuals to be completely blocked based on something they've said about the government or something they said about X, Y, Z. It's not popular. You want them to still be able to have the ability to, to live and, and th thrive, you know? So, and, and yeah. yeah, so. And it, it's interesting how you brought up gold and silver as something that would, uh, be a big part of it and backing gold and silver, backing crypto with gold and silver. There's a lot of buzz around that because to your point, yeah, if, if you get in trouble for saying, speaking up, even if it's not even it's politically wrong and the governing body doesn't like what you said. Yeah. You, your credits are going to be limited, right? But if it was backed by gold and silver and you found a way to physically obtain it, you could technically sell that and in exchange to get currency that you wouldn't have been able to obtain due to whatever blockage you have. So yeah, it, again, it can get this, this conversation can get really, really deep and <laughs> detailed, right? Oh yeah. I mean, it, it's a rabbit hole. <laughs> it's, it's a crazy rabbit hole. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, but, but it, I mean, yeah. but it's a critical, critical moment that, you know, we bring it up, you know, and then at least get the people kind of like, uh, interested in talking about it and then aware because the awareness is what's lacking right now. Cause you know, it's, Literally, you got a trillion dollar, you know, marketing machine that, that is pushing, you know, this, you know, this AI uh, rollout. And, and it's like, oh, the fanfare, all the, you know, it's Hollywoodization of, uh, you know, tech. And you got all these guys that walk out on stage and, you know, it's all this, you know, it, and, and, and so they're doing all that. And so everybody claps, but it's like, what are the destruction of humanity is on underway? So, yeah, yeah, it's not, <laughs> it's like, it's not a good tra trajectory. <laughs> yeah. So we, we, uh, we broke down your solution. We broke <laughs> down the problems. If anybody is looking to get more into the AI trust council, is it in development stages to, like entirely, or can people try it out and test it out? Yeah. So right now we just have a landing page. Um, yeah, we're building it out right now. Um, and uh, we have an app that's, that's rolling out here soon too. And so, yeah, we're, we're right on the verge of, of getting it out, but, but yeah, so they can go to the, as in the AITC.com, uh, and please sign up all the people that sign up today, 
you know, we're, we're taking early membership and then, you know, and, and, uh, yeah, so please get, get involved and, and get on the list because we, we want good pro human people to be a part of this whole thing. And yeah, and you want to have a, a place online that can be a home of truth and honesty and, you know, pro human intention. So it's almost like a decentralized social media on web three, pretty much. Well, and then you're able to generate income because you're creating content, bringing awareness, but you want it the consensus the vibe to be pro-human do you have a um when when someone signs up how do you make sure I, that someone is uh pro-human outside of their background of profession yeah it, it is it, and they could be not pro-human it's you know, it's fine you know whatever but but the idea is that it it gives it's a platform that you can operate from and uh and put information out and uh and, and it, it gives some validity to it because it's like okay at least i know where it came from you know there's six degrees of separation for everybody in the, on earth so it's like okay like you know if you post something or like you know let's say your your you know family's uh you know boss's sister posted something and because i know you you know i, I can connect that and and be able to determine like where it came from and, and i can actually validate it and I'd be like hey do you know you know so we have a system for validation and um mm -hmm. let's say you can have do you have a system for validating images or videos? Yep. Yeah. How'd yeah. you so, do that? Yeah. So basically we're, we're white labeling some of the best in the world, you know, software that is a filter. So basically it can identify, uh, AI, uh, generated imagery and videos and also text. Text is not perfect. Anybody who says the detection software is perfect, it, it's not. Um, and so that's where we came up with the, the whole concept of, you know, knowing that the, the origin, you know, mm -hmm. so basically it's like, you have to uh, look at the, you know, the real world and, 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 you know, how is trust established in the real world? Well, it's like, you know, somebody says something and the first thing you're gonna do is like, well, how do you know them? Who are they? What's the, you know, like that kind of thing. Do they have a reputation for being honest? You know, that kind of thing. So that reminds me, do you ever get any pop-ups for movie trailers, like the sequel to back to the future four or, or John Wick seven or something like that. And you're like, this looks good. And it's all AI generated and it's just a spoof, like a fan made yeah. thing. How do you, how would you address that? <laughs> so, so basically if, if you want to, so if someone's on the trust council, you know, social media, basically you just, you identify is this AI generated or human. Mm. And so you just mark it. And, uh, and it's up to the, the, the content creator to market is like, Hey, I used AI in this or, you know, or this is totally like pro human or not pro human, but actual human. Hey everybody. So due to technical difficulties, we had to cut the episode short. Who knows? Maybe it was AI or some unknown entity wanting us to just shut up and stop bad mouthing AI and the deep fakes and all that. But looks like some promising projects starting up in the future, including Christopher's AI Trust Council. That looks pretty cool. So yes, we're ending the show right now. This is like one of those things where it's good to be aware of the threats and that there are solutions out there. With that said, thank you for joining us today. And if you wanna connect with Christopher, all the content will be in the show notes or just go to the AITC.com and that's his website for the project that he mentioned which is the AI Trust Council. Again, thank you for joining me today and I'll see you out on the next episode. Peace!